Today, we're going to talk about the flight of SpaceX's Starship SN10, the most spectacular flight test of any Starship prototype to date. We're also going to talk about what may have happened during the landing and subsequent explosion. Just one month after the flight of Starship SN9, SN10's three Raptor engines ignited, and we all watched with bated breath as they all shut off again just a tenth of a second before liftoff. It turned out that one of the engines was producing more thrust than the programmed limit, and the computer aborted the flight. As Elon Musk tweeted, the maximum thrust limit was conservatively set. After the teams looked at the data, they determined that there was no issue, and they could just raise the thrust limit and try again. There were only a few hours left in the launch window, but luckily SpaceX previously got practice doing multiple static fires in one day with SN9, so they managed to reset and try again around two and a half hours later. The engines lit, and this time there was no holding back. SN10 was going to have to defy the odds if it was ever going to be seen standing in one piece again. Some of these shots are just incredible by the way. Our first view of the engine camera, and good news, no fires on the engines this time. Notice there is some yellow and orange in the exhaust, we'll talk about that in a second, but at this point in the flights of SN8 and SN9, the first engine had already intentionally shut down to prevent the vehicle from accelerating too much. But SN10's three Raptors kept going for more than 30 seconds longer, before it dropped down to two engines, so SN10 probably flew a little faster as a result. So we can see one engine burning quite yellowish orange instead of the normal bluish purple. This typically happens when there is unburned fuel in the exhaust. This probably isn't a problem. All three of SN8's engines were burning orange. It could even be that the engines are being run fuel rich on purpose for thermal control. In any case, that engine continues burning that way until it shut down at T plus 3 minutes and 13 seconds. The same time as SN8 and SN9. At this point, John Innsbrucker, commentating on the stream, accidentally leaves his mic on and mentions switching over to the header tanks for the one engine. This is interesting because the official SpaceX site also seems to say that the switch over to the header tanks happens before the transition to the belly flop position. So while the last engine is still running, I don't know why they would do this and it's actually perplexed me even before SN10 flew. Anyway, soon after this, the vehicle is basically hovering at its apogee of about 10 kilometers. Don't be fooled by the moving clouds in the background. SN10 is mostly standing still. We see the familiar propellant dumps, and at exactly T plus 420, the final engine initiates the flip and shuts down. We get this awesome view from below, but unfortunately we can't quite compare the flip to SN9 and SN8 like we did before. And then we see this beautiful shot of SN10 maintaining stability as it falls back down to Earth, preparing for its attempt to make history. At just below 2 kilometers, the engines are retooled in preparation for the relight. At an altitude of only 500 meters or so, all three engines relight and SN10 starts and successfully completes its controlled landing flip. Two engines shut down leaving a single engine to perform the final landing maneuvering and slowing down for the first ever full-scale Starship landing. It's truly insane that it took only three attempts to accomplish this. After several seconds, the dust clears and we can clearly see that although SN10 is on fire and leaning heavily to one side, it is still standing in one piece. For now, anyway. We'll get to what happened next later, but first let's dissect the landing. You'll notice that this time they lit all three Raptors for the landing flip. This was to prevent a single engine failure resulting in landing failure like with SN9. Now as a result of this, the landing flip injects even more horizontal velocity into the vehicle than normal. We can see that in how far it has to translate back to the center of the landing pad. Another interesting thing is that the two engines shut down immediately after one another. I would think this was intentional, and I'll show you why using the awesome footage from Everyday Astronaut. Make sure to check out the full video, link in description. We can see that when the two engines shut off, 
the vehicle was almost about to start hovering, and two engines would likely have still been too much thrust to come down fast enough. Unfortunately, SN10 came down a little too fast at the end. Notice the bounce right as it touches down. Yikes! And look at how the engine skirt and flaps are essentially resting on the ground. The fact that half of the landing legs failed to deploy correctly probably didn't help either. So as we were all getting ready to watch the first replays, SN10 decided that it was not done flying just yet. It looks like the hard landing caused serious damage to the bottom of the liquid oxygen tank, and 8 minutes after touchdown, it failed releasing several bar of pressure and sending SN10 to Valhalla. The fireball was most likely just an after effect of the release of gaseous propellants into the fire below. Notice how the nose cone actually crumpled from the upwards acceleration. We didn't see any missing heat shield tiles at any point, but it would have been awesome if we could see how the tiles held up to this. So unfortunately, the first full-scale starship to ever land won't be able to be preserved. All in all though, this was a massive success, and I have no doubt that all the data SpaceX got from the landing will help them smooth things out for future tests. And it looks like SN11 will be rolling out shortly, and I can't wait to see how it does. If this video was informative, please make sure to click that like button and also consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos like this. You can also check out my video on Starship SN9. Thanks for watching.